With this relationship between the magnetic stripe, the chip and contactless transactions, you're probably wondering how different that information is between those types of transactions. And one of the most interesting and useful exercises that I found is to take a card that you've been issued and to compare these different sources of information. So you might not be able to look at the chip inserted transactions, that's perhaps a little harder, but a really easy way to look at the Magstripe is you can buy a Magstripe reader. So here I've got this Magstripe reader. It's less than $100 on Amazon. It's the MSR605X. And it comes with software, so it's pretty easy to understand and it's simple to swipe your card and to see the information. And then in terms of looking at NFC transactions or the information from your, your NFC interface, what you can do is you can download an app, which I'm going to link to on an Android phone, and you can bring your card into close contact with the phone and you'll be able to read from it. And what I'd like you to do is just to compare those sources of information and see how different they are, or if they're not that different at all. So now we're going to look at an example of comparing different data sources for a card of mine so that you can see some of the differences and some of the similarities between the different data sources. So here I have the MSR 605X, which I'm going to use to swipe my card. And it's really simple to use, so I can open the applications on, uh, the application on Windows, that's no problem. And you can see that it says the device is online. So then I can select read and put it into read mode. And I can then swipe my card. And you can see for this specific card, we have track one and track two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that information into a notepad and then we can compare that to another data source. So here we have track one. And we can grab track two as well. And then we can check another data source. So now we're going to see what information we can obtain from the chip of this specific card. It doesn't have an NFC interface, so we'll just be looking at the Magstripe and the chip, and we can see some similarities between those two interfaces. So what I'm using to do that is this card reader, which is the SCR3310, which I'm going to link to. And I have a VM set up with Python EMV Utilities, which is written by David Barkusian, which I'm going to link to his GitHub repository. So once you've downloaded that, it's very simple. You just need to connect uh, your device. So I'm going to disconnect and reconnect my device because Sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly. And then you just need to insert the card and run the EMV interrogator. And that has produced quite a lot of information, most of what most of this we don't need for this specific exercise. If I scroll up, probably quite close to the top, we can see the track to equivalent data and copy this information into the text pad as well. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it into here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to compare those two sources of information for the Amex card and see what the data structure looks like. So if you look at the notepad I have set up, what we can see on 
the first line is the track one from the mag stripe then on the third line we have the track two from the mag stripe and then on the fifth line we have the track two equivalent from the chip so the way that this is made up is that the track one and track two are quite similar the main difference is that track one contains the card holder name and track two is purely numeric so if we look at the actual structure the first thing that we can see on um, on track one is a letter b and that's a start sentinel so this just indicates that we are going to have uh, some information sent so that's the b then we have the primary account number which as we know contains the iin so that indicates that we have a specific bank and the specific card brand then if we go along we can see a separator which is this little top hat here followed by the card holder name which we can see galloway forward slash l then we have another separator which is this top hat after that we have four digits which correspond to the expiry date and the expiry date for this card is june 2015 sorry july 2015 then we have three digits for the service code now the service code tells us what this card can be used for so it tells us whether the card can be used domestically or internationally and what kind of services you can use it for so whether you can use it for regular kind of goods can you use it as a, at an atm and 201 is a fairly common service code then after that the remaining digits are assigned to something called discretionary data now discretionary data as i mentioned is something that an issuer uses to determine whether they're going to authorize the transaction and this information is actually proprietary but what we do know is that the equivalent of the card security code or CVV is contained within the discretionary data so if we look at the next line or, or line three here so the track two from the mag stripe we can see that it's almost exactly the same we have the primary account number we have a separator which is this equal sign the expiry which is July 2015 a three digit service code which is 201 and the rest is allotted for the discretionary data now that brings us to line number five which is the reading we took from the chip so here we can see first of all we've got the primary account number which is exactly the same then we have a separator which is this equal sign we have an expiry date which is 2015 July a service code of 201 and then we also have this discretionary data which is as you can see if you look at the discretionary data for track 2 equivalent from the chip and the track 2 on the mag stripe and even on the track one you can see that the information contained within it is fairly similar and now i'm wondering what kind of information you found from doing this activity were the sources of information similar or were they different in the next exercise we'll be looking at a different card and we'll take a reading from the nfc interface the chip inserted and have a look at the mag stripe as well.